the AI copyright debate is heating up in court. We've had a bunch of different lawsuits that have actually been going on for over a year or around a year. I know you've been hearing about them probably. I wanna break down exactly what is happening because we currently have Mid Journey, Runway, Devon Art, um, we have Stability AI and a bunch of others. These lawsuits are going down and they actually in a big way are gonna determine what happens to the AI image generation industry in the future and also video generation. But there's been a lot of twists and turns that you, you might not be familiar with. So I'm gonna break down everything happening in these court cases, how they've evolved and where I think they're gonna be going in the future. So the first thing that I wanna say is that um, this is a class action copyright lawsuit and it was filed by a bunch of different artists um, against you know a handful of companies that are just listed and they all said that they are you know essentially these are all companies that provide AI images and video generators um, as you know their underlying machine learning models right so things like Midjourney that are you know taking these images they've scraped from the internet training their models with them and then spitting out um, images now there's a bunch of different arguments for and against both sides of this I'm gonna just try to bring you the facts of the case and maybe I'll give you some of my opinion in there but what I will say is that lawyers for the defendants, so that is Stability AI, Midjourney, Runway, and Devonart, all filed motions to dismiss the case in the U.S. District Court for the, nether, or the Northern District of California. This is where the, the case actually was brought. And um, the lawsuit was originally filed by some visual artists. So I think the original people filing this lawsuit were Sarah Anderson, Kelly McCurran, um, Carla Oritz. And this happened more than a year ago that these individuals filed this lawsuit. So I remember when this happened, people were like, oh my gosh, it's the end of mid journey. You know, there's these people suing them. They're gonna make it so that they can't like train their model on this. This has been going on for over a year. Mid journey obviously has released mid journey V6, which is phenomenally perfect AI image generator. Well, not perfect, but it's pretty dang insane. Um, so I think we've seen a lot of improvements and it kind of has curbed a lot of people being like, oh, it's the end of AI image because it seems like these companies just keep pouring you know, millions more dollars into training these models. And if they thought they were gonna lose this case, they wouldn't. So I think that is an interesting aspect. Now, in regards to the case, um, Judge William H. Oreck dismissed most of the original infringement claims. So you know, they literally brought this case forward and it the whole thing pretty much got dismissed, but he did invite the plaintiffs to refile an amended claim. So he didn't close the door on them, he just said, you know, you, you didn't do this correctly. It, honestly, to me, it makes me feel like perhaps this was a little bit amateur, the original uh, lawsuit. And he's like, maybe there's a case to be made here. This was a little amateur. We're gonna, most of these are dismissed, but you can refile an amended claim. So after that, there was a bunch of new plaintiffs who joined the amended claim. And I'm not sure if these are, I mean, I hate to be pessimistic because I know that a lot of people are, you know, have strong opinions on this. Um, I'm not sure if these are all just people that are like, oh, there's a lawsuit. I'm an artist. I want to be added to this in case there's like some sort of payout and I get, you know, money from it. Or if they're like, you know, deeply hurt individuals that feel like they, you know, their livelihoods are risked from mid journey. I'm not sure where it stands on this, but I will just say um, a bunch of new people jumped on the lawsuit when they amended the claim. You had Hawk Southern, Grigor Skitz Rizowski, Gregory Manches, Gerald Brom, Jinga Zhang, Julia Kay, and Adam Ellis. Um, they all jumped on the lawsuit when it was getting amended. So the artists in all of this are arguing that AI companies essentially infringe their copyright by using their artwork to train AI models without permission, right? That's the basic thing here. Um, now in, in like the, over the course of this entire lawsuit being brought, you've seen different companies start to make different choices, right? So you have Adobe, for example, who has an AI image generator and they trained it. Number one, they did two things to, I think, avoid similar lawsuits. And also they were kind of hedging against the fact that they were worried that this whole lawsuit was going to blow up and ruin these companies. So they actually trained their AI models off of data sets. They have like stock, a stock footage library and they trained it off of just those stock images, which they, you know, added in the terms of service that they're allowed to use. So I know some people are actually, I've heard people complain about even that because they're like, hey, they like strong armed or found a loophole to get like artists art in there. But the other thing that they did is they actually pay royalties to artists anytime they're theoretically, and this isn't exactly how it works, I'll explain this, but theoretically, it's anytime your AI art is you or your art is used to generate AI art, you get a royalty, right? That's the concept. Now, it doesn't actually work exactly like this. How it actually works is, let's say there's like a million images in this data set, and let's say you have a thousand of those images, um, you get like, you know, that you get the percentage that a thousand is of a million worth of a royalty when something is generated. Um, so it's actually, you're, 
you could have a ton of really unpopular pictures on the stock thing. You could have gamed the system if you knew how this is how they were doing it before they did it. But you could add a ton of really unpopular pictures on the stock thing and then you're gonna get a disproportionate percentage of the royalty. That's how I understand it because it's really hard to tell when an AI image is generated, what images actually fed into that after it's been trained. I don't think it's actually traceable. So anyways, that's a side note, but like, you have to give Adobe some credit because they're actually trying to pay royalties. I see, I've you know had people complaining that it's unfair, so I don't know if there's any way to win in this situation. And uh, other than like shut down the AI image models, which obviously is not going to happen because millions of people around the world, over seven or eight million people around the Midjourney Discord, millions of people around the world love this tool, love this technology. It's not gonna get shut down. It'll be turned open source if the government was outlawing it. So I don't think that really the people saying that it can exist at all, I don't think that they'll ever win. And whether you like it or not, I'm not saying if it's right or wrong, whether you like it or not, this technology will exist. So it's probably best that you try to find solutions similar to the music industry going with paying royalties on Spotify or what Adobe is trying to do, paying royalties for the image generator. Okay, so with that, out of the way, let's talk about what is happening here. Let's talk about the key arguments and some of the quotes from the filings um, that I think are particularly interested, right? So there are four companies primarily being sued here, Devonart, Runway, Stability AI, and Midjourney. Okay, the first thing that I wanna just get out of the way here is Devonart's filing in their filing. They emphasized that they have a kind of a unique position. They said, quote, Devon Art's inclusion as a defendant in the lawsuit has never made sense Plaintiffs included Devon Art in the suit because they believed that merely implementing an AI model created, trained, and distributed by others renders the implementer liable for infringement. Simply put, if plaintiffs can state a claim against Devon Art, anyone whose works was used to train an AI model can state the same claim against millions of other innocent parties. Okay, blah, blah, blah. What they're really saying here is Devon Art never made an AI model. They just, on their website, they hosted some like third-party AI models. Um, and they're included in this lawsuit because they did that. So it'd kind of be like, um, you know, let's say like you have a website and you include at the top of your website, this is very common, a Google search function. So a lot of people just, you know, they pretty much outsource the search on their website to Google. When you search in that thing, it just searches websites or just searches, you know, um, pages on your website. Now, let's say that Google was in some big lawsuit and this search function was deemed illegal because they didn't get permission to blah, 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 they stole an algorithm from someone to do it. I don't know, right, let's say, and then all of a sudden someone goes and finds, let's say a big website like the New York Times was using a Google search bar to search stuff on the New York Times. It's like if you included the New York Times in that lawsuit and it's like, yeah, they have a Google search bar on there. It's like, yes, it's an API to Google, a third party, the New York Times is not liable for Google stealing an algorithm to do that. This is all a fabricated lawsuit, but this illustrates the point, right? So I actually think this is very, uh, legitimate Devon Art shouldn't be on this lawsuit again it just it feels a little bit amateur they amended it and so I'm not sure if they like realized it maybe it was am kind of amateur done they're like well maybe there's some better cases we can make maybe when they amended it they couldn't change who they were suing that was doing too much that was more than an amendment so they kept them on regardless Devon Art shouldn't be on this lawsuit that's ridiculous and also makes me feel like the people doing this lawsuit don't really know what's going on and I hate to say that because um, I'm not trying to like beg on them or say that it's not great it's just that isn't like very um, confidence inspiring when you see that they're on the loss. Okay, so next up we come to Runway. So Runway is being sued in this. This is actually interesting to me because originally, um, you know, a lot of people just talked about the fact that this was a lawsuit against these image generators like Midjourney and Stability AI that scraped all the images. Now it's interesting because it's going to video, right? Runway, I think, did the same thing as everyone else except that they're using these images to turn them into video, which is a whole nother thing and it's interesting that you know, like these models weren't trained by like scraping videos and training them. Anyways, it, it's, it's, I think this is all fascinating, but this is what Runway has kind of you said to kind of counter the claims of, um, one thing that they were accused of is storing original images for training. And they said, quote, the mere fact that plaintiffs must rely on these papers to allege that models can store training images demonstrates that their theory is meritless. Plaintiffs silence on this issue speaks volumes and by itself defeats their model theory. Okay, so Runway has their own reasons why they don't think they should be included or why this whole thing should be thrown out. Now, it's interesting here, and this is gonna be a theme that I'll bring up again and again. This is not the defendants like saying, we have a right to scrape all the content on the internet and get it for free and train our models and publish stuff. They're like, 
it seems like they're kind of nitpicking at the way that they're being sued, which again, I just don't think speaks well to the plaintiffs, um, right? It seemed kind of amateur that everything got thrown out and they had to come in with a lawsuit again, because it doesn't seem like the defendants here are like defending necessarily, like they didn't say anything about the reason why they should have been allowed to use everyone's images. They're just talking about how, you know, the, the uh, accusation that they were storing original images for training because essentially what Runway's saying is like they scrape everything they train their model and then they delete all the images they, uh, we don't know where all the images came from or like what they were but like that's kind of their thing and uh that's part of you know why they were being upset they're like you literally took our images you store them in your data set you know you literally are take like holding our copyrights hostage in your little data set and training your models off of it but they're saying no we just like took it we trained and then we deleted it so I don't really think that that gets to the base problem a lot of people have, but it's interesting. It seems like maybe the plaintiffs didn't do a good job in putting this together. I, you know, I mean, I'm not really here to to judge or whatever. I'm no you know, legal expert. It just seems like these are, seems like easy shots, right? Like Devon Art being included, Runway being accused of storing. Like these are things that are easy fixes, not the big question, the big elephant in the room of scraping the entire internet. Okay, let's get to stability. So stability AI essentially is defending its models as not being infringing works. They're arguing that the notion that their AI encourages copyright infringement is inaccurate. They say, quote, plaintiffs offer no such clear evidence here. This lone comment does not demonstrate stability AI's improper object to foster infringement. So they're saying, they're actually defending the fact that like you taking the image and using it to train and spitting something out is not against copyright infringement because um, because they're not specifically encouraging copyright infringement. That's their, that's theirs. Again, I don't think that it actually addresses taking the images in the first place. Um, and maybe that, you know, maybe there is no legal footing there. So, but I like, when I think of this whole issue, that's kind of what I think is like the problem. And that doesn't seem to be what everyone ta is talking about is the problem. Okay. Mid journey, the, the big, you know, the big player on the block, the most popular AI model mid journey, what do they have to say? So mid journey, when they are addressing all of the controversy over its founders, discord messages, this is something that they were like specifically targeted for is what their founder had been saying on discord. Um, they were clarifying by saying, quote, the court should consider the entire relevant segment of the Discord message thread, not just the snippets plaintiffs cited out of context. Plaintiffs do not contend that anything in the post was inaccurate. Identifying any user who was supposedly confused or explaining why any user following Midjourney's Discord channel might mistakenly believe that any artist listed in the name list endorsed the Midjourney platform. Okay. Again, not really addressing the elephant in the room of scraping all of the images on the internet, but specifically talking about, um, you know, some accusations that were made against them about their CEO and some discord messages that he had. Of course, you know, when you do these lawsuits, you have discovery. So they're able to like go and seize all of your messages, um, which I'm sure was not thrilling. But anyways, I think all of these filings right now highlight a really pivotal, a pivotal you know, moment in the intersection of copyright law and AI. So right now as courts are kind of trying to grapple with the implications of generative AI technologies on, of course, like these creative works, these images and also video, I think the outcome of this case could set a very significant precedent um, for the future of AI generated content and copyright law. So that's why I think this is very important to, to talk about and bring up. I think this is interesting. Um, I would say there's might be a good case to make. You have people like Adobe trying to do it in what they call the right way. Um, but it would appear that this case also has a lot of holes. So I'm not hundred percent sure where this is going to go, um, how well this was put together or, you know, I'm no copyright expert. So I don't know if this is actually going to fly as copyright infringement or if this is actually, you know, under fair use, which is the big argument here is fair use versus copyright. So I'll keep you up to date on everything happening in this case. Very interesting to hear uh, some of these statements from the big companies, um, what they're being sued of. This obviously has massive implications for how this would all play out in the future. So I'll keep you up to date on all of it.